And this is the very famous challenge that all of us face, especially when the journey starts. And we think, if we do something different and we let a little bit go and we relate to our situation, it will ruin the whole family. We all are scared. We are all worried. What's going to be with the siblings? What's going to be with the other part of the family? Now it's all standing to fall apart. I had this vision how I control my family and I am the one who tells them what to do and what not to do. And only when they listen to me can this family be the way I envisioned my family to be. And now it's all rumbling, falling apart, and they blame and they hate this child for doing it, for bringing it into the house. And people are skeptical. So, and rightfully so, we are scared when things change. We think that the whole world is falling apart. So one of the Rabbonim turned to the Shimon Russell and he asked him, what about the other siblings? And Rabbi Shimon addressed it and he started explaining to them with his way, professional way. I sent over someone to him and asked him for the shoes, the permission, if he would allow me to please address that question. And he said, Bechovet Godel, he stopped in the middle of his speech and he called me up and he asked me, Can, would you maybe address this? And I said, of course. And all I did was, I kept the Rabbonim up for probably a half hour, in short, to share with them my story, my journey. I will not keep you here for a half hour to repeat to you what I told them. But my finish line was a very simple finish line. I told them how when it started, when it all started, and the neighbors grouped up against me, and they were all about that I should get rid of my own child, throw her out on the street, because it should not ruin the neighborhood, the effect that it can have on the neighborhood. And my question to them was a very simple question. There were two families on our block. One of them had three kids thrown out. When he threw out the first one, it did not uh, scare off or teach a lesson to the other children, obviously, because he had to throw out another kid. And then another kid. There were three kids thrown out. And then there was another family on the block that had two, two kids out of the house. So when these neighbors confronted me, I turned to them with a question. I don't see that throwing out the kid is a solution to save the family. How come by this family it didn't save? And how come I did by this family it didn't save? And I have an even another, a, a deeper question. If throwing out a kid shows the message, the right message, why did my daughter not get scared of this? She heard how many kids are thrown out and it did not scare her to do what she's doing. So this is failing. Your method is failing and I'm not scared to stand up against you and tell you that's an embarrassment to keep repeating the same things when it fails. On the other hand, I can attest and I can tell you and I shared with them my whole journey and I said, Baruch Hashem, what a beautiful family we have all together, including Kips, including oh, everybody is embraced. Such a beautiful family. I'm so proud of each and every one of them. Not, there's not one of my children that I'm not a bit not proud. I feel so lucky to have them all. And I finished off my finish line over there and I explained it to them, I tell them about Iches. And when I finished off, I said, I have one message to all of you and remember that. And this is what I want to tell you tonight. Throwing out a kid does not save anyone. Keeping them home does not ruin anyone. And for that, without further ado, I want to proudly show off my son to show you that keeping home my daughter did not ruin anyone. Amram, please step up. Thank you. I will just tell you one thing. In my prior Gilgal, I call it, before this whole journey, I would never ever hug or kiss a child. Now, this is my routine.